go. Helps to have the green light on the microphone on. Reason one, stand among us now. Speak your words of peace. Release us from our fears. Heal us from our wounds. When there seems to be no way, beckon us forward. When we stumble in the darkness, remind us of the new light being born. Forgive us our betrayals for den our denials of your love so we may embody your wholeness. Hold our hands in the dance of justice and weave our steps into spirals of freedom so we may become your living body. Amen. When we embody our full nature before God, our imperfection is part of our perfection in God's eyes. Hear the good news. In God's grace, we are forgiven. Thank Thanks be God. to God. God of wonder, you make all things new. On this Easter morn, we are ready to hear of mystery we can't explain, of death, that is not the end of love that reigns eternal. Open our hearts and make us ready to hear your life-giving word. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is the story of Easter morning from the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to read it and some of our children and parents and other volunteers are going to help 
reenact our story this morning to bring it to life and to bring our children into, into worship. So I'm going to let them get into place. And while they get into place, I'll just note for those who are on Zoom, we can't quite figure out what's why that recycling noise was happening earlier. And so we think that it won't be a problem through the service unless people You for your prayers later, but I invite you to use the chat to, um, and we'll read your prayers out loud. Facebook is running somewhere in the background that we can't find and causing that circular thing to happen. Okay, so as we get started this morning, we're going to need a little bit of audience participation. The first couple of things are very easy. You can do them from your seat. The Gospel of Matthew is a particularly dramatic telling of the Easter morning story. And so we decided, you know, you just got to embrace it. You either kind of skim over it and try to ignore that all of this crazy stuff is happening, or you dive right in and say, this is meant to be theater. So that's what we're doing, is we're diving right in. So at the very beginning, um, the first line is, at, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning. And so we need your help with the dawn. Um, in April's house, or Polly's, I don't remember who's April's, um, when, when they're talking about the sunrise coming up, we, they pretend to be flowers that are coming up and blossoming. So as I read that part, I could use all of your help, if you're willing, with being a flower that's coming up and blossoming. Great. Help us with the dawn as the first of the week was dawning. And then a couple lines later, it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And so one of our other kids and parents had the idea that everyone could help be our earthquake. Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful. And then finally, we don't have a tomb. We have a stone. Couldn't you tell this is the stone in front of the tomb? But we don't have a tomb, so we need two volunteers to be our tomb. Could we have two volunteers? You're just going to stand there for a couple of minutes like this. Thank you, Judy. Oh, great. Ron is all ready. Okay. I really meant it that that was just for practice, but you're welcome to do it. That's great. Thank you. Okay. So go ahead and stand up there to be our tomb. Okay, I'm going to let our drum get ready. You can rest your arms for just a second until our drum is ready. <laughs> Got wandering angels. I mean, you know, it was, things were different that morning. Okay, all right, let's get our tomb ready and let's go ahead and get started. So this is the Easter story according to the Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. <laughs> His appearance was like lightning. And his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook. And became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, See the place where he lay.
The angel continued, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of those mornings. Happy Easter. Easter. Christ is risen. risen Will you pray with me? Holy One, as we gather together in this place to celebrate what you have done and what you are doing in our lives, in the world, in Christ. God, we pray that the meditations of our hearts, the words of our mouth, The songs that we sing, the praise that we lift up to you would be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I know it's Easter Sunday, but I hope that you'll permit me to do a little bit of setting the stage for the story that we've just heard. You see, it's come after several days of escalating tension and conflict that we arrive at the story this morning. After several days of baiting the leaders, of sowing dissension, flipping over tables, Jesus is arrested and silenced. He is silenced in the most brutal, most public way possible. And then the tomb was sealed and a guard was posted. The authorities wanted there to be no more story, no more outburst, no more disruption. There would be no rising on the third day, as this imposter said. There would be no resurrection, no insurrection, no nothing. Silence, order, peace. Peace was disrupted two weeks ago when the eyes of the nation turned to Nashville, Tennessee, a place that I called home for six years, when a shooter burst into Covenant School and murdered six people before being gunned down by the police. The shooter was a member of the community, an alumni of that school, hurting wounded, wounding others with legally purchased weapons. The nation grieved, Nashville grieved. I am an acquaintance, bordering on friend with a man who is the chaplain of that school 
And he documented on social media the, the prayers, the funerals, the outpouring of grief, and finally anger. And the eyes of the city and the eyes of the world turned to the state legislature. Nashville State House is a poisonous setting where very little happens. Certainly they are allergic to restrictions on gun ownership and to the alleged right to carry. D. Patrick Rogers, the editor of the Nashville Scene, published in a tweet yesterday, I've seen the greatest minds of my generation develop thousand yard stairs from covering the Tennessee State Legislature for a single session. It is a place of gridlock and grandstanding and fascism. And to be a Democrat in the State House of Tennessee is to be in a work environment full of superficial politeness and covert abuse that toes the line of decorum. I have known legislators who spoke up being punished with assignments to closets as their offices where they would be unable to meet with their constituents safely during the time of pandemic. There's not much to do when you are a state representative or a state senator in Tennessee, but make speeches, get on the record, and fundraise. There is no opportunity to legislate. There is no opportunity to affect policy. It is what is sometimes called a super, super majority that in a state that went for Trump 60-40, the state house is held by 76% Republican seats and the state Senate is 82% Republican. But as Nashville grieved and directed their anger at those who had the power to protect children and instead chose to protect guns, Protesters came to the Capitol. They marched, they chanted, they screamed, they grieved. And representatives Justin Pearson, Justin Jones, and Gloria Johnson stood with them. When the state legislature and the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, made the motion to silence the protesters cut the power. They took the well, that's the pulpit, so to speak, and they held it. When sound was cut, they held a megaphone and continued to hold the floor in sacred disruption. Witness to the loss of life, witness to the need for action. And yes, one could argue that they broke the rules of decorum of the State House of Tennessee. There are punishments, consequences when you break the rules of decorum. That punishment is censorship. It's you lose the right to speak on the floor for some period of time. You can only vote yes, no, or absent. But instead, the state legislature, the State House of Tennessee, chose to expel the three who spoke. Justin Jones and Justin Pearson were expelled by that same supermajority that I just named. And Gloria Johnson narrowly missed being expelled by just a few votes. In a state legislature, in a state that is already profoundly gerrymandered, in which the communities of Memphis and Nashville are already profoundly silenced, they were silenced just a little more. And two state districts no longer held a representative, no longer had a person representing their voice, representing their interests, and holding space for their grief in the halls of power. 
That Easter morning, Mary and the other Mary go to the tomb, not to dress the body, not to attend to Jesus as they do in the other Gospels. Again, in Matthew's story, there's a security crackdown, and the tomb is sealed and guarded. There will be no interference, certainly not on this, the third day. And so they go not with the hope of being able to attend to the body, not with the hope of being able to provide care after death, just to be in a vigil, just to see the tomb, just to go and be present to offer the only confrontation, the only protest they can offer, their witness, their presence. And maybe, just maybe, I like to think they went with hope. They went with hope that just as Jesus had said, he might have risen. As improbable as it seemed, as unlikely, that Jesus might have still risen. And the scene that they discover, the scene we just witnessed acted out so superbly, is shocking. Another earthquake. There was an earthquake on Friday. This is the second earthquake in a single weekend. Thank you for whoever was doing that. <laughs> and the stone, the stone is not there anymore. The stone is rolled away. And an angel, an angel did it. And he sat on that stone, that boulder that had sealed off hope. It's just a seat now. And the power of empire, the power of order, the power that had thought, that had sought to crush, to silence, to bring to heal, to extinguish disorderly life. Well, those guards standing by the tomb, standing by the place where death happens, rests, they become like dead men themselves. But the tomb is empty. And the angel says to them, do not be afraid, which to be honest is asking rather a lot. Asking rather a lot in that moment when everything that has come to bear over the last 72 hours is horror and destruction and death. And in the single moment, I can't snap, the single moment, things seem to be coming undone. And already the angel saying, do not be afraid, <laughs> as if it were that easy. Let's come and see where he lay. He's not there anymore. that rolling the stone away, that moment when the seal was broken, Jesus had already risen. He was already not there. Life had already broken through, even before anyone saw it. And they go away, and the angel says, do not be afraid, but they go away how? With fear and with joy. When the state legislature voted to expel Jones and Pearson, the world erupted. The nation erupted with outrage, and suddenly a spotlight was shown on all those who had sought to silence, and on all that they had attempted to silence. You'd think they would know about the Streisand effect 
but they didn't. And suddenly, this movement that they had sought to block out, it's, it's bigger than it was before. It's not just Tennessee. Dollars, voices, tweets, protesters streaming in from across the country to Nashville, Tennessee, to the State House. They thought they, thought they could crush this. They thought they could bury it. And life is continuing to stream forth. The city councils of Nashville and Memphis are tasked with reappointing, or with appointing, should they choose, an interim representative. And following that interim representative, there'll be a special election to fill the vacancies. And already, the city councils of Nashville and Memphis are pledging to reelect, to reappoint Jones and Pearson. And of course, the state is threatening funding. Memphis wants a new stadium. Nashville wants a new stadium. It's always stadiums. <laughs> stadiums come with lots of money, lots of state investment. The threat is pretty simple. You reappoint this person, this punk. They, they did a really good job of avoiding the word boy, but you can hear it. If you reappoint this person, we will take your money away. No new stadium for the Tennessee Titans. And yet, at the time of this speaking, those city councils are standing strong. And tomorrow, Nashville will meet in a special meeting. And I expect them to reappoint Jones. And if they don't get it done then, they'll get it done in two weeks. There's some procedural stuff. When the two women leave the tomb, Mary and the other Mary, a lot of Marys, when they leave the tomb, they run into Jesus. They fall at his feet. He says, go tell the others. We've got things to do. We don't always talk very much about Mary and the other Mary. We tend to talk more about the Twelve. We tend to talk more about the movement that built after them, but they are the first to see, the first to believe, the first to encounter the risen Christ and the apostles to the apostles. And they are ordinary women. They didn't go there that day to start a religion, to start an insurrection. They went there to stand at the tomb of their friend who had died. They were ordinary people. And life teemed forth from them, from the movement that sprang up at their feet, from movement that sprang up while they were at Jesus' feet. They were ordinary people. And I was, I was saying about the Tennessee State Legislature it's not a place where a lot happens most of the time. I don't know Justin Pearson, but I do know Justin Jones and I do know Gloria Johnson. And I can tell you that they're ordinary people. In fact, for years, Gloria Johnson was known as a nice but kooky lady who kept up a fool's fight in Knoxville running again and again and again in one of the only competitive districts in a highly gerrymandered state. She'd been serving in the state legislature since 2012, losing and then getting back in, and then losing and then getting back in. She did this out of love. She hadn't had a lot of spotlight before this. It wasn't like it was a position with a lot of power it wasn't like it was a position that required more than a person willing to stand up and do it. 
again and again. It's an odd job. And Jones, I met Justin Jones when we were at Vanderbilt together. He is a gifted, talented speaker. He's an incredible movement leader. Very talented at seizing the moment, very talented at finding the right words. And yet the first time that Justin Jones ran for office, he ran for Congress in Nashville. And he was disqualified from the ballot. Not because of white supremacy or anybody kicking him off the ballot, but because he failed to get the 25 signatures that you need to get in order to be on the ballot. Because in the enthusiasm to run the campaign, nobody told him that you need to get 25 registered voters to sign your petition and turn it in by the state. <laughs> Which is a pretty funny mistake. I mean, he would have been a great candidate. It would have been a nice election to have him in. These are ordinary people that make mistakes, that fight fights that don't make sense, that sometimes tick off their partners in the movement. And yet when the moment called for action, they were in the position to take it. They took it. They stood with the protesters. They gave voice to the grief of community. And they stood proud against attempts to silence them. And now those attempts to silence them have led to an explosion of life, an explosion of energy. And I don't know how it will change things in Tennessee. I don't know how it will change things in this country where we seem determined to continue to grieve and do nothing. I don't know, and I still have a lot of fear, but I also have joy. I have joy that ordinary people telling the story, ordinary people seizing the moment, not because they were unlike us, cut from above, miracle people, but because they believed, because they acted, and because each of us can too. The Easter resurrection is not meant to be something that sits on a pedestal, on a cross high above the church, where no one can touch it, no one can reach it. The cross of the resurrection is right here. It's empty and covered in flowers. It's covered in life. Life like yours and mine. You can touch it. You can reach it. You can be part of it. May it be so. Amen. Don't worry about that. That's good call.
may be seated. One of the ways that we witness to the fact that new life is always possible is by holding our prayers of sorrow and our prayers of joy here together. What prayers of concern do you have to share today? Uh, my wife's uh, grandson, my ex-wife's grandson, is in the hospital at the UW with a liver transplant. He so far has survived, but uh, his bile duct is not operating properly, and they had to go in again. So I really don't. Keith, my son, is down there now, and I don't know it's nip and tuck at this time, so prayers for him. What's his name, Ken? Chris. Chris? For Chris's healing and well-being and all those caring for him, I pray. We join our hearts in prayer. For my sister Emily, who is my second sister who had a heart attack around the same time. Um, she just got out of the hospital on Friday. I'm going to visit her this afternoon. So I'm hoping that both my heart attack sisters heal. Elizabeth. For Emily and Elizabeth, I pray. We join our hearts in prayer. Um, I have a relative in Norway that I was hoping to visit next month when I'm there. Uh, I've seen them several times. Uh, she died, however, Norrin died um, kind of unexpectedly a few weeks ago. And so prayers for her husband, Kel, and her family, please. For Norrin and her family, we pray. Join our hearts in prayer. This is from Debbie. My one-year-old granddaughter, Rachel, is very sick, and the doctors haven't been able to figure out what's going on yet. For Rachel, I pray. We join our hearts in prayer. My four-year-old spiked a fever last night and was still sick this morning, so he and my husband aren't here today. Um, but while on the ferry this morning with my one-year-old, I was particularly noticing all the other families around me who were um, a grandparent with a grandchild who was FaceTiming her parents and um, somebody who was FaceTiming her dad in another state. And so for all of those who are apart from loved ones in important times, I pray. We join our hearts in prayer. Let's continue in prayer. Holy One, I pray on this Easter for all those who easily find hope in the resurrection, and also for those who don't, for those who struggle with these stories for those who maybe need permission to not take them literally, but still find hope and life. For those who have been so beaten down by life that it's hard to believe no matter what. I pray God that on this Easter morning and in this Easter season, that we can all, as Pastor Joe said, find in ourselves as ordinary people the ability to stand in the places where we find ourselves and witness to the truth and justice and paths to new life and hope that you offer us, God, and that you have asked us 
to teach and carry forward in the name of Jesus. We pray for healing for those who are ill, for comfort for the grieving, for company for the isolated, and for help for all those who need it. We pray especially for the wounded places on this earth, for the places that are suffering because of man-made disaster, like in Nashville, and places suffering from war, and from the places that are suffering from natural disaster, and so-called natural disasters that are really a result of climate change as well. Help us, God, to seek new life and hope, not just in the moment, but to act for the long haul. That our children and our children's children may also believe that new life is always possible. We thank you, God, that there are so many signs of hope and new life in our own lives and in the news and around us. Hear us now as we share some of those prayers of joy and thanksgiving. What prayers do you have to share today? Hi, my name's Jill. I'm visiting from Philadelphia, and I'm very thankful to be able to be with my daughter on her 23rd birthday. For Jill being with us and being able to be with her daughter on her birthday, I give thanks to God. We join our hearts in gladness. Uh, it's always a joy to art with Elizabeth, um, but I've really enjoyed watching the mural um, develop on the wall. Um, and I'm grateful for her, for Abby, and for all those who have contributed. For Elizabeth, Abby, Polly, and all the prayers and um, images to this prayerful artwork this season, I give thanks to God. Yesterday, it was, we celebrated the birthday of my youngest, uh, the 10th birthday of my youngest granddaughter. And we also celebrated Easter because, you know, at the same time, it was a pleasure to see my family and my granddaughters. Serena is 12 and she'll be 13. And she was so glad to hear me saying her will be a teenager in a few months. We had so much fun and thanks to God for this. For the celebration of Serena's birthday, for um, time together as family, we give thanks to God. Sophie, excuse me. I have a new great grandfather, grand, grand uh, granddaughter, grandfather. That that would be great. I am I'm a great grandfather again. Uh, Winifred was born last week and seems to be thriving and happy. For the safe arrival of Winifred, I give thanks to God. I think it's a blessing for all of us to have Salwa and Mary Lou Knox here today. A blessing. Thank you for making the journey. For the blessing of having Salwa and Mary Lou Knox in our presence today, I give thanks to God. I've really enjoyed the uh, Lent book readings. I've enjoyed all the years of Lent book readings, but I really enjoyed the the group that we've been getting together with. It's been a um, 
wonderful to read the chapters each week and share and uh, some insightful moments have been brought up and it's been really good. So I can't remember the words, but you you probably do. <laughs> for the opportunity to connect in those small groups and for the words of Cole Arthur Riley and the um, and all of the reflection that that has brought. I give thanks to God. I know everyone uh, cannot enjoy what Tom and I get to enjoy, and that is our daughter and her wonderful family. And they uh, luckily live not far, well, sometimes too close, but not <laughs> most of the time, not far. And uh, we love them dearly and uh, glad they could join us today for the blessing of having family close by with all that that brings <laughs> we give thanks to god we join our hearts in gladness i'm thankful to the washington state legislature for taking some steps to try to limit access to mass destruction type of weapons and let's call them that because that's what they are and i'm grateful for the actions of our legislature, we give, we give thanks to God. As we continue in prayer, we're going to do our Lord's Prayer in song. If this is new to you, we invite you to join along as a sounds right to you. And don't worry, you won't be wrong. Um, or just listen and enjoy. Let's join together in prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. Good morning and happy Easter. Happy <laughs> so this morning's offering, except for regular pledges, will go to One Great Hour of Sharing. One Great Hour of Sharing supports three programs for people around the world. Uh, the first is Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, also Presbyterian Hunger Program, and a program called Self-Development of People. So please find it in your hearts to give what you can to share God's love with our neighbors in need. And thank you.
Gracious God, we thank you for each gift and every giver. Our gifts today will work with gifts from many other churches that participate in one great hour of sharing to help people in need around the world. Amen. Thank you, Pat, and you may be seated. One of the ways that we offer our gifts to God is by sharing ways of participating in the life and ministry of this church. Do we have any announcements this morning? Although I'm late with the agenda, the deacons will meet as usual uh, on Wednesday, 7.15 via Zoom. And I just want to thank everybody, the deacons want to thank everybody who brought food for the brunch, there is still food out there. There is more coffee. Uh, please feel free to come and join us after the service for more food. I'm making a spur of the moment decision here. Uh, because of our little technical difficulties at the beginning, uh, readers, if you don't mind, and Roberta, our pianist, we'll do that again instead of the scheduled postlude at the end of the service, we'll, we'll do our opening piece one more time so that everybody can actually hear it. How about that? Any other announcements this morning? Is the Black Lives Matter witness happening this afternoon? 
Yes. So if you would like to join. <laughs> So the Black Lives Matter witness happens every Sunday, no matter how many people show up, from 2 to 3.30 down by the high school in Ballard at the corner of 15th and 65th. Bring a sign. If you have one, you don't have to have one. You can just show up. I think uh, a couple people will be there today. It'll be not as nice as last Sunday, but it's still a gorgeous day. So show up if you can. Somebody will be there. Thanks, Todd. Please, if you would like, or if you are able, take a lily. Uh, if you have someone who is shut in, uh, uh, please feel free to take them one of the lilies. And we really, really mean that. You get a lily, and you get a lily, and you get a lily. Um, <laughs> we know that uh, uh, lilies are very, very toxic to cats, and so anybody with a cat should not take one. But anybody else, if you like lilies, you should take one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, well, then we will move to communion. I don't see our kids yet, but they might be coming in late, maybe. Okay, well, they will get here when they get here. Um, one of the ways that we try to make our worship accessible to our kids is by bringing at least some of it literally down to their level. So we've been celebrating communion on the floor, and as they come, they will join us on the floor. And anyone who uh, has young knees who would like to join us on the floor, you're, you are welcome as well. Let's go ahead and get started, and we'll get here when we get here. This Easter, we are invited to remember. We are invited to remember that God is with us always, that we don't have to be particularly talented or someone who thinks of ourselves as an activist or a hero to do something important, that we are all a part of bringing about new life and assuring that there can be new life in the future. Welcome. Emmett, could you help me pour the juice today? When we get to that time, I'll let you know. And Calvin, Calvin. it's not time yet, but when it is time, could you break the bread for us? Yeah. Okay, Pastor Joe will let you know when it's time, okay? Oh, let's Mama, wait. Let's sing the story of this table together. You can join us by opening your Sing the Faith hymnals to 2257, or you can just listen and enjoy. The Lord be with you. To the Lord our God, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Creator of light, giver of all life, source of love, you guide the sun, you cradle the moon, and you toss the stars. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. You breathe life into us and offer us a covenant of love and service. Even when we turn away from you, you do not forsake us. You send your prophets to proclaim your justice, to remind us of your promise of peace and call us back to you. And so it is on this Easter morning that we join the song of all creation to proclaim your goodness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Oh, so I'm in the 
mighty and tender God, in Jesus of Nazareth, we recognize the fullness of your grace, light, life, and love, revealed in words that confront and comfort us, in teachings that challenge and change us, in, com in compassion that heals and frees us. And now, as we gather at this table to remember and to be filled with such longing for your realm, may we turn our worship into witness and follow in your way. We remember that when Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, can you hold it up? Hold it up. Saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends. You can pour it. Pour this in. Saying, drink. This cup that is poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever, whenever you drink of it, remember me. Loving God, we rejoice in your gift of grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming the hope of resurrection, waiting in hope for his kingdom. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who share in this loaf and cup may be the body of Christ, light, life, and love in the world. In this hope and as your Easter people, we praise you. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. 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 Friends, the table is set, the feast is prepared. Come, for all is ready for you.
Oh. Friends, on this Easter morning, remember, proclaim, Christ is alive. Christ is alive, not just then, but now. Christ is alive in each of us. Go and be people of resurrection. Go and be people of this new life streaming forth where it was told not to be. Go and be Easter people. Amen. We're ready. darkness rises grief rises mystery rises wonder out of wonder rises connection rises community rises a story that has not yet ended. Rises courage, 
rises strength, rises possibility. Out of possibility, rises light, rises life. Rises spirit. And out of that spirit. Rises faith. Rises hope. Rises, rises love. love. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Nancy. <laughs> is, is Nancy there? <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Hi, Neola. Hi, Hi. Mike and Kathy. Hi. Roger. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Debbie. How are you doing? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> 